Hey guys, in this video we're going to be looking at refraction. I'm going to be taking a ray of light, passing it through a block and seeing how the path of the light changes. I want to thank Tuition Kit for helping me make this video. They have a fantastic, fantastic website where you can schedule all of your vision videos, all of my YouTube videos, their own videos and loads and loads of other awesome YouTube videos. Here is my ray box with my Perspex blocks. I've drawn around three positions for the Perspex block and now I'm going to draw the ray diagram. So now we've finished with the ray box and what I've done is I've drawn, using my pencil my ruler, drawn nice straight lines where the light goes in and light goes out. I'm just going to put my ruler there. And the first thing I want you to notice is that this is where the light went in, this is where the light came out, the perspex blocks. Put my ruler there and you'll notice that the light lines don't line up. The ray of light has changed place as it has gone into and out of the box. And this is refraction. So now we're going to draw, um, I'll show you how to draw ray diagrams for these. I will do them for perspex and then I did a glass block as well. Same thing we can see with the glass block that the ray going in does not match the ray going out there in different locations. Um, I'll show you how to draw the ray diagrams and then we will look at the results. So I'm going to do it for this block in the middle here. I've drawn around the block and this is my ray going in and my ray going out. And the first thing I'm going to do is to join up the two rays of light. So we can now see the path that the light took as it went in. What I need to do now is to draw on my normal. So with my um, protractor, I'm going to line my protractor up there. I'm going to put a point at 90 degrees. Then I'm going to join that up. And I'm going to join it up with a dashed line. This is my normal. I'm going to do the same for the ray coming out. So I'm going to put the point, uh, the middle of the protractor where the ray came out of the box. Put a little dash at 90 degrees. Use my ruler to join that up there and there. I'm going to do that with a dash line. So that's my second normal. Now we need to measure our angles of incidence and our angles of refraction. This one here is our angle of incidence. There is our angle of refraction. We always measure it against the normal. Same on the other side. There is our angle of refraction. There is our angle of incidence. Now I can use my protractor to measure these values. Just going to make the lines a bit longer. So putting the middle of my protractor on the middle of it there, lining that up, and that is going through 21 degrees. Doing the same on the other side, 13 degrees there. 13 degrees there, and that one is 30 degrees. I'll keep going with the rest of these and then I'll show you the results. These are the results from my experiment and you can see they are not perfect. Here we have angle of incidence 30 with 13, 19 and 20 as the angle of refraction. This is okay, it was a real experiment, real life is not perfect. We'll be able to see the relationship better when we plot it on a graph. Now for glass, this is quite nice. We've got them all clustered around a central area, so I can draw my line a best fit like that. 
Whereas Perspex, there does seem to be a couple of odd results. So I'm going to circle those, those are my number of results, and I'm going to ignore them when I draw my line of best fit. So we can see for both sets of results, the angle of refraction, the angle of incidence for Perspex and glass, we do have a nice relationship. A straight line relationship, these lines look to be parallel to each other, but they are not the same. That's because when we are going from air into perspex or air into glass, there's going to be a different change in refractive index. When we're moving from medium 1 into medium 2, and this can be air into perspex, air into glass, water into glass, water into perspex, basically any media. There's going to be a change in the refractive index and we can work out um, the critical angle of the refractive index and we can work out the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction. This is called Snell's Law. And that's going to be the angle of incidence, sine of the angle of incidence, divided by sine of the angle of refraction, is equal to refractive index or the thing that it's moving into, divided by the refractive index or the thing that it's moving from. And it's important to note that at not the critical angle, the angle of refraction is 90 degrees.